Hi there, I'm Zhishun, I'm a teammate, it's Nai Yuan, and we are Team Happy Mobile Friend. Here's our topic. This project is going to investigate the potential risk of the anonymity of the cryptocurrency in the Android Wallet app, and we are going to see if we can map the cryptocurrency address with the Android device information to know that who is using which address to make the, making the transaction. And here's our agenda. First, I'm going to talk about why we choose this topic and why we think this is an important issue. Anonymity is really an important, issue, important feature for the cryptocurrency. If someone wants to buy something but this person doesn't want to be checked, probably this person will use the cryptocurrency. Blockchain protocol provides the anonymity and the security for the transaction, and mobile wallet app provides the convenience for the user to manage the cryptocurrency account. Ideally, combine these two services can provide the security, anonymity, and the convenience. However, security is really an issue for the mobile device and apps. In the Android platform, device vendors can customize Android operating system on their product, but it is unlikely that vendors will keep updating update Android operations on each of their product. Android app has same issue. Some memory accounts will not be patched since that the business decision or some of the memory comes from the bad implementation. So, we come to this idea. Could we use the memory in the Android operating system or the apps or the wallet app to break the anonymity for the cryptocurrency? Uh, we are going to split this topic into two parts. The first part is to cloud in the personal information in the Android device, like what is the contact information in the smartphone and what is the geolocation of this device, and um, when do the wallet app be open. Uh, we may use this information to identify who is using this Andro Android device. For the next part, it's to collect the wallet app info user information. In the transaction, cryptocurrency address is a one-time address, so it's hard to using the it's hard to know who is using which address. Having said that, if we can collect the cryptocurrency one-time address to map to the device information, then we may be able to know who is using which address. And this is our timeline. The date is the finish. The tax should when should the tax should be finished? This week, the first week in October, we're going to investigate the Android systems. And this part, uh, this part including finding a possible way to monitor the program process. Uh, we want to know what kind of process is running on the program. Who uh, user is using the Google Map or user is using the wallet app? And next, we're going to see if we can find in the current view of the foreground process and we're going to implement the process monitor in the background to collect the foreground process information and we're going to investigate on the cache of the wallet app in the android device for example uh, wallet app coinbass app is using the sqlite database as a cache to storage the address and the balance information and we're going to see um, if we can restrict information from the database and what kind of privilege or what kind of permission do we need and then we are going to try to intercept the network traffic both on the system level and the app level to see the network traffic of the transaction service transaction. And next week we are going to evaluate how we are going to do on the on route device. Like will there be any issue for the privilege or the permission to implement the process monitor? And for the next month we are going to implement the main this attack. Um, uh, I will talk about the detail of the main this attack later, and we're going to use this attack to install the logger malicious app, malicious data thief, or the personal information collector on the Android device in silence. Um, this slide shows that what we're going to implement to achieve our goal. Uh, we will go through how we implement to how we plan to implement this and how we're going to use this. Um, and many this attack is a really new topic. It was reported by the checkpoint in August this year, just two months ago. And we think that this is an interesting topic and we will use this to do the installation for the malicious app. And implementation of the loggers to gather can gather user information and we're going to combine this with the foreground process monitor so that we can know that for example a user is open the wallet app and log in and swap and click to the transaction patch and make the transaction and using the clipboard to pass the cryptocurrency address to make the transaction. Combining this, we will have a malware service app, um, not only breaking the anonymity of the cryptocurrency, but it should also have a ability to submit the end on the individual, and we can use this to do the social engineering or phishing. And next part is a detail about how we are going to for the implementation. 
Uh, the first is the menu disk attack, and here's how it works. Uh, in the Android operating system, external storage is shared between each app, and every app can access the data in the external storage. So if an app is going to load the resource from external storage, it needs to check the validation validation of the resource first. Having said that, a lot of the developers don't follow this rule, so here comes the menu disk attack. The attack flow is like this. There will be a malicious app in the Android and keep looking at the external storage. And there's another Binal app and we will try to download the temporary update file and store it in the external storage. And when we load the update file, it will not check the validate, validation. The first step is that Binal app is going to download the update file and malicious app will find that there's an update file in the storage. And the malicious app can access and modify the content of the update file. When the binal app tries to run this temporary update file without validate first, the temporary update file could already become the installer for some the other malicious app. And for the implementation, the first part is to proof of concept. We're going to implement the binal app, malicious app, and update file, and we are going to use the manage disk attack to modify the update file during this in during this experimentation, uh, we also try to see that um, what uh, that uh, there's an app installed through the temporary other file. What kind of per permission can this app get in silence? And we are going to test this on a different version of the Android operating system since that they got different permission request method and then we come with a different result. And Xiaomi browser is one of app with this permissibility, and Xiaomi doesn't have have any plan to patch this variability, so we we need to understand we are going to use this and attack this app. We are going to understand the update process for some browser, uh, like when will the update file be checked, the validation and integrity, and what is the update file name in the external storage, and how do we slow down the update process for some browser so that we can have time to temper it. Uh, to, to modify the update file, and next we are going to do the either code injection and silent installation based on what we find of the permission issue from previous proof of concept experience. If a malicious app is installed and manages this attack successfully and can get a permission same as the Binal app, then we are going to install a client to send out the stolen data to the remote server. If not, we are going to use this attack to install some app we need, but they don't need special permissions such as Keylogger or the Clipboard Logger. Hi, I'm Nayuan Hu. I'm going to talk about the network capture part in our project. The main idea of this part is to capture all the traffic from the user's phone and then try to identify the traffic of wallet's app. Then. From those, traffic of, from those traffic of wallet app, we may obtain private information such as user's wallet address. So, the first step is to capture network traffic. There are apps like Wireshark and TCP Dump in Google Play, and we plan to directly use them for experiments. But first, we need to check if they support to run in background, because our capture process should be in background. In the later stage of this project, we may implement this feature on our own, because this feature should be integrated into our malicious app. The second part is about identifying what is traffic. We plan to apply technique from related work about profiling and machine learning. Profiling is a technique going through all the possible execution path of an application to record the runtime information such as the resource usage, the entities that have been communicated with, and after the record procedure, a profile for that application will be generated. Profiling could target for, for particular source. In this case, we are, we are mostly interested in network. Thus, once we create a successful profile for targeted wallet app, we could use it to identify its traffic. Another technique is using machine learning to train a filter for the traffic of Wallet app. A successful filter could also identify the traffic from Wallet app. However, as this technique needs large amounts of traffic for input, and we do not have budget to generate large amounts of transaction traffic, this technique may be unpractical. The next part of our project is implement 
loggers. The first thing we think about implementing loggers is how to make them run in background. Android provides background process and background servers, and we could try both of them. By background process, we could implement our logger by keep capturing the touch screen and clipboard. By background servers, our loggers could be invoked by uh, will be invoked when a keystrokes event or copy paste event happen. The second issue about implementing logger is permission. Luckily, it seems that every app could access users' clipboard without permission. Using touchscreen API also does not need permission. However, that's just the case for app in foreground. As our loggers should be run in background, we need to do more investigation about permission issue of background running app. Next part is process monitor. This part is an auxiliary to collect more data about the user. This part includes a temp foreground process and process list. Android also provide API for these two usage, but they need system privilege to do so. Also, we are not sure if this API will work in background. So we need to investigate into this, into these two issues. Again, permission and background running. Now I'm going to talk about our potential risk. First, the risk about implementing capture network traffic and then analyze it. Capture traffic is not difficult since there are many implemented apps doing such thing. The difficult part is the analysis. And the difficulty comes from the analysis technique and the fact that the traffic encrypted. Those analysis techniques I have mentioned, like profiling and machine learning to categorize apps, are mostly seen in essay and rarely have implemented example. So we are not sure how hard to really implement profiling and those techniques. And even if we find a tool or successfully implement such technique like profiling, we could not validate if the obtained network traffic is really coming from the wallet app because the traffic is encrypted. Another issue is that the capture traffic may overwhelm the user storage if we didn't set the time for start and ending. There are also some potential risks on main the disk. First, we need a phone with external storage to realize this attack, and Nexus 4 does not have an external storage. Second, we are going to use Xiaomi browser as a target for main in the disk attack, and Xiaomi may patch the vulnerability in the meantime when we are doing this project. But using previous version of Xiaomi browser could easily bypass this risk. Now I want to talk about another risk. Previously, we planned to build our own private blockchain. There are multiple benefits to build our own blockchain for transaction experiments. First, we do not need to wait for transaction being confirmed from unverified pool. Second, we could generate transaction unlimitedly to create large amounts of network traffic. With large amounts of tra transaction network traffic, we could quickly get the source to create to create pattern for the transaction from the wallet by using the machine learning method previously mentioned. Thus, building our own blockchain benefits us in many ways. Unfortunately, one teammate who has the experience in building blockchain dropped this course. Increases the, the, the difficulty for us to do experiments experiment about transaction. So we have come up with backup plan which does not aim in at wallet app. So in our backup plan, we are not just targeting app, but targeting on general apps, which means that the goal of this backup plan is to capture as much as information of the user. The information intended to capture include what apps does the user have, what apps is running in the foreground, uh, the data in clipboard, the data in external storage, and the network traffic from the user's phone. Considering our current project plan, we are going to implement log loggers and process monitor. And this 
could be directly used by this backup plan. The, de the deliverables of this backup plan could be used in social engineering. From the leaked information, we could infer the user action. For example, when we detect the foreground app is Twitter, and the touch screen event is at right bottom corner of screen, we could infer that the user is going to post. Thus, this backup plan is a feasible plan because of its similarity to our current project plan, and it could also generate meaningful deliverables. This is our plan, this is our project plan. We're a team happy mobile friend. Thank you.